hit the nail on the knob. Is that it? Is that it? Nail on the head? Knobs are great too, Kai. We love knobs, don't we? The kid just doesn't know this shit. He's not paid to know this shit. Who's texting me? Hey guys, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today we're having a little movie night and we're gonna be talking a little bit about the new hot food documentary on Netflix, What the Health. So if you haven't yet seen it, count your lucky stars, but I'm gonna give you a little overview. Basically the film follows the filmmaker Kip Anderson as he goes undercover to try to find out all the dangers of a meat-based diet. Now listen guys, I love my vegan friends. I am not against this film because it's promoting a plant-based diet. I'm against this film because of the misinformation and the manipulations and cheap shots that they're willing to take to make their point. So let's do a little movie night now. I like the music. Just one serving of deli meats daily increases your risks of colorectal cancer by 18%. I had no idea that what we ate affected cancer rates. But I never felt like I had eaten a lot of processed meats until I realized that processed meat includes hot dogs, bacon, sausage, salami, ham, pepperoni, cold cuts, and deli slices. Ba I'm sorry. If, if you didn't realize that bacon was considered a processed meat, what else would have been a processed meat? I, I don't understand. Bacon, hot dogs, bologna, and he's confused and surprised that this is considered under the blanket of processed foods? This guy is not really the smartest person, probably not the kind of person I want to be taking nutrition advice from. Just saying. All right, kids, well, let's just take a little, little step back here uh, and let's meet our friend Kip. So if you've seen his last documentary, Cowspiracy, you'll know that even though he presents himself like he's just coming into veganism right now and exploring this, this new territory, He's been a vegan for quite a while. I mean, this is nothing new. This is not his first rodeo. And so I guess we know that both of the directors have quite a lot of biases going in. And that becomes incredibly evident when you see the kinds of vegan doctors that they choose to feature in the film. Now listen, Kip, I totally get it. It's really hard to go into a filmmaking opportunity without some kind of preconceived notion about what you want to talk about or your specific angle. But just come out say it. Don't pretend like you're going on this fact-finding mission when you've clearly already found all the facts that you want to find. I mean, just be honest. So, issue number one, Kip's shitty journalism skills. The guy's got no game. Thanks for calling your American Cancer Society. My name is Sam. I'm a cancer information specialist coming out today. Hi, I was calling because I was wondering why you all recommend people to eat processed meat on your website which the World Health Organization has classified as a group one carcinogen, which is in the same class as tobacco smoking, asbestos, and plutonium. This would be like a lung association having a how to roll your own cigarette section on their website. Okay. It's kind of the same thing. It's not the same thing. But let me just place you on a brief hold because, um... He wasn't able to answer my questions and said someone Aww. would get back with me. Kip, are you really that surprise I mean you called a 1-800 number and spoke to probably like an intern he's not paid to know the a massive vast body of research out there on that topic I mean that would be like going to the grocery store and asking the bag boy how profitable that location is okay so moving on clearly Kip does not improve his journalism game because he does it again later on in the film let's take a look at your website we notice heart healthy recipes and we were uh, kind of bewildered by why there's a bunch of recipes on a whole section on beef, beef recipes, and there's also a section on egg recipes when there's such a strong link between beef, red meat, and heart disease. I, I, I honestly don't know because I don't do that, I guess. That's not what I do. <laughs> Another organization rep that wasn't able to answer my questions, but he said that he'd have someone get in touch shortly. I mean, Obviously, Kip, again, you seem to want to interpret this is not what I do into, oh, I'm hiding something. The guy does not know these things, so he can't give you the information. Why would he know these things? It's just not his job. We have to speak someone in person. There's millions of people dying from the foods that they're recommending people to eat. Oh my God, listen, Kip, you really think that the security guard is going to have memorized all the peer-reviewed journals out there for the company that he represents? 
It's not his job. The flesh food that I would eliminate from the American diet would be poultry, would be turkey and chicken. A brilliant advertising campaign has convinced people that, oh, it's white meat, it's healthier. Uh, okay, Kip, so if you skipped out on journalism school, which I assume that you did, let me do a little recap for you. So one of the hallmarks of good journalism is that you're getting both sides of the coin, that you're interviewing people with different perspectives. And clearly, you're taking advantage of that here in What the Health, because almost like a majority of the doctors that you've interviewed here are vegan, and they support a plant-based diet in a variety of money-making ways. So it seems like you are not okay with this, but somehow you're okay with this. Might wanna get your priorities straight there, Kip. Issue number two is dramatics. So this film is a huge fan of dark, scary rooms and vivid imagery and big, crazy words that they use to promote paranoia about food. Ham, pepperoni, cold cuts, and deli slices. Basically everything I grew up eating. The World Health Organization classifies processed meat as a group one carcinogen the same group as cigarettes, asbestos, and plutonium, and classifies red meat as a group two carcinogen. Was this like I had essentially been smoking my entire childhood? Oh. If processed meats are labeled the same as cigarettes, how is it even legal for kids to be eating this way? That is some scary imagery, Kip. Honestly, if I were a parent, I would be really freaked out about it too. But I think you've really misunderstood the research here. So when the WHO released their report linking processed meats to cancer and categorizing processed meats in the same category as asbestos and tobacco, they were doing so with the understanding that the category represented the strength of the research and not necessarily the risk. These classifications didn't really give us any understanding of how much processed meats you would need to consume in order to increase your risk of cancer or even how much it would increase your risk. The classifications are being put into these categories meant that the strength of the research linking processed meats to cancer was similar to the strength of the research linking tobacco to cancer. So this was not an attempt to make these things the same thing because they're not the same thing. So let me reiterate that one more time. The only things that are similar between tobacco and processed meats when it comes to cancer is the strength of that research, as well as the fact that, of course, there was some correlation. And Kip, correlation does not equal causation. That's just basic understanding of research. Dairy products in general have a lot of other products associated with it, not the least of which is pus. I mean, they actually have laws limiting how much pus you can actually have in a milk and still sell it. I believe it's like 750,000 pus cells per cc. Because, I mean, you wouldn't want too much pus in it. Be like, mm. sure, pus, people might object. In fact, you could think of cheese as kind of coagulated cow pus, if you would. But I was always told that we need milk for some... I mean, God, is the guy getting paid per pus? Like, obviously we don't like the word pus, so they're just gonna shove it in there and shove it down your throat as many times in association with dairy milk because that's gonna turn you off the shit, won't it? When we eat these kind of dead meat bacteria toxins within minutes. What does that even mean? Honestly, dead meat bacterial toxins? It's just like a bunch of really scary words strung together in an effort to scare you. And it's scary, man. I'm scared. Is chicken better? It's a question of whether you want to be shot or hung. The flesh food that I... That's so scary. I mean, who, who the says that? Does he actually go at home and, and think about the, the parallels between different ways of dying and consuming different kinds of animal proteins? That shit f***ed up! I never really thought about eggs much. I just thought of them as a standard part of a healthy diet. But then I found a study suggesting that eating just one egg a day can be as bad as smoking five cigarettes per day for life expectancy. Oh my god, where, does these, where do these people get their medical degrees? I think he needs to go back to school and take that one nutrition course all over again because there is a lot going on in an egg yolk. Egg yolks have protein, healthy fats, calcium, iron, phosphorus, selenium, folate, vitamin B12, vitamin D, vitamin A, and carotenoids. I mean, there's a lot going on in that little yolk. Still think it's crap? No, you're wrong. Issue number three, 
the use of personal testimonials as research. So throughout the film, we run into a variety of very selected individuals who are suffering from a wide range of chronic diseases like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and osteoporosis, which are really big, serious problems. The problem is this film insinuates that the reason these people have chronic disease is because they've been consuming meat all their lives. When the reality is, we know that nutrition is just one factor contributing to chronic disease risk. My name's Michael Abdallah. This is Michael. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And unfortunately, I was diagnosed about 10 years ago with diabetes. And eight years ago, I had two stents put in. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. You're just like out of options and, and you don't know what to do. You're taking medicine, you listen to this doctor. And the cardiologist says, hey, take this. And the, and the uh, endocrinologist says, take that. And then your general practitioner doctor says, you don't know what's going on here. And it's a, it's a real... It's a real challenging thing, and it's something that you don't want to get. You just don't want to get it. Government and... Yeah, well that's Michael. And Michael's got diabetes and sounds like heart disease. He's had a few stents put in, and he's taken all these medications and insulin, and you know, it's overwhelming. There's a lot going on, and, and, and he's not alone. A lot of North Americans are suffering from chronic disease, just like Michael. So let's, let's check out Jane. I'm Jane Chapman, and not too long ago, finally got some x-rays of the hips and back. Severe bilateral osteoarthritis of the hips, and actually I'm scheduled for two hip replacements. That's bone on bone. It's the grinding of the joints. My stability is scary. I hold on to the walls if I'm at home. I've been told to use a walker. I'm only 61. This is not how you're supposed to live when you're this old. I have a really hard time believing that that's all that's left. So in this very carefully crafted and staged piece, um, you know, we, we see dark, dingy settings, uh, lots of medication out, they've got poor mobility. It's just bad news all around, really. So let's just keep in the back of our mind how our individuals are portrayed in some of these earlier sections of the film and how they differ from some of the later sections when our two individuals have been on a vegan diet for two weeks. Let's take a look. Those are so amazing. See, like, this <laughs> I, know. I know. From going from the walker, needing wheelchair assistance at the airport to Strolling down the street, enjoying the fresh air, the sunshine. Two weeks. It's all it took. Two weeks to get off all the meds and uh, start to, to feel the inflammation mm. just kind of drain out of the body, where the movement was much easier. Uh, just a lot of healing occurred very very rapidly just by doing the right things for your body. All right, well done, Jane. Let's take a look at our friend Michael. Valentine's Day, I decided to go vegan and give up all meat, which was never in my thoughts in a while, million years, but I've heard so much success from people that are, are vegan. And so we, I gave up all animal product whatsoever. I've lost uh, 29 pounds. I've been able to cut my meds in half. I've been able to cut my insulin in half. And now I'm going for the moon. I'm going to cut it all out. In the last six weeks, we've just had three grandchildren. And my ugly face is going to be around to see him graduate from high school and college. I'm going to be here. So guys, like, let's be honest. I'm really happy for these people. They made some dietary changes. They're feeling better. This is exactly why dietitians do what they do. It's exciting to watch these kinds of transformations. However, this is classic testimonial psychology here. We went from a dark, dingy room covered in medications and obviously not feeling well to beautiful, bright scenery, lots of color, hair, makeup, people talking about grandchildren. I mean, obviously you're going to be thinking that that vegan diet is directly correlated with some of these outcomes, but that's not necessarily the case. So we don't know with a sample size of two that removing the meat in their diet had the intended effect of reducing their chronic disease. Was it perhaps something else like a lifestyle change, like them walking or, or moving more? Was it the fact that their diet beforehand was them eating five McDonald's cheeseburgers and getting rid of those and incorporating more fruits and vegetables? of course had that intended effect. 
We have no idea. And this brings me to the fact that doing the nutrition research is really, really difficult. I mean, this is why we need really huge sample sizes and we need to control for confounding factors in order to understand how one thing influences another thing. Doing a testimonial with two people who've gone on a vegan diet does not constitute high quality research. Okay guys, let's sum this film up. So I think that What the Health actually does a pretty good job communicating some of the environmental and even some of the health concerns associated with eating an excess of meat. I definitely think we could all do better to consume less animal products and incorporate some more plant-based proteins into our diet. And I think veganism can be really healthy both for our body and our environment when done right. However, forcing this information down people's throat using fear is just the wrong way to go about it. I mean, we are now facing a rise in a ton of food fear-based eating disorders, things like orthorexia. So this kind of communication of, of food information is not benign. It's actually seriously dangerous. So nutrition research is not that simple, guys. So don't expect to get it all in a 90-minute food documentary. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with some of your thoughts on what the health. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.